Hello Daily Drafters and welcome back to the channel for today's Daily Draft. Today we are drafting Outlaws of Thunder Junction beginning with today's pack one pick one that I am not super thrilled about. We do have Tiny Bones the pickpocket here which has been decent against me. I think I played with it once or twice and it, it wasn't the greatest when I did. It usually just traded off for a mercenary token and every time it's against me, it's like I have big fat green creatures, which is just really annoying. There's also clear shot, which is very good if you want to try to get into green. Claim jumper, I think is fine. Um, not outstanding necessarily and everything else is pretty garbage here. So Question is, do we want to like shoot for potential upside with a with black mythic or just like take a good card in the best color in the format here? I mean, I'll, I'll try out Tiny Bones. I, I do think my instinct tells me that Clear Shot is actually a better card, but I think I'll, I'll give Tiny Bones at least a little bit of a shot here. What do we have here? Anguished, Unmaking, Exile, a non-land permanent, and you lose three life for three mana at instant speed. Eh, fine. Not, not outstanding. I would give it maybe a C plus, potentially. There is Getaway Glamour, which is three mana to destroy the biggest creature on the battlefield. And four mana to blink something and do that too if you want to. There's some red cards here that aren't very good. There is a Visage Bandit, which I think is pretty good in the right deck. There's also just a Jagged Barons though, which does touch black for Tiny Bones. Not that I'm sold on Tiny Bones already. I don't even think this, the Getaway Glamour is that much better than a potential Crime Land in black red, maybe? Um, but I'm not super sold on the Getaway Glamour there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take the Jagged Barons. And if you give me a third pick Intimidation Campaign, I'm going to take it. <laughs> card is great. Well, let's put it this way. Card is um, probably not great, but I love it. Which means it's great for me. So I think I'm going to take the Intimidation Campaign. I don't think we wheel a Tyrant Scorn or a Metamorphic Blast, but it'd be great if we did. Uh, Jagged Barons goes really well with the Intimidation Campaign if we can find a red card we need to splash. But I'm going to go ahead and take this here and lean into that. We, look, we've already got Deserts Dew, which goes well with both Intimidation Campaign and the Jagged Barons, as it is a desert. There's Imp's Mischief, which I think could be playable. I don't think you really need to pick it very early, though. Rakish Crew could be good in straight black-red. I don't know if... This isn't a card I have had the chance to try out. If Black Red is open, like this card could actually wheel here. I mean, there's Make Your Own Luck, Giant Beaver. I mean, the last two... So we're going to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So there's going to be three cards left with a Swamp, an Armadillo, and maybe the Rakish Crew comes back. We might get like Thunder Thief or Pulverizer or Grizzly as well. But I think I'm just going to take the Deserts Dew, which... Can go fine enough in a red-black deck if that's where we end up. Blue is looking to be a little bit cut already, and we do have black, so... I mean, I guess we take Prickly Pear and potentially move into red-black. Um, I don't need the Thunder Thief. I don't think either of these are worth splashing. There's no white card to move me in here. I don't like Boneyard Desecrator or Gigapede, really. Deputy, we're not probably not really wanting to splash yet, so I'll just take the Prickly Pear. Now there is another Crime Land, as well as Jailbreak Scheme for our blue-black life, and this town ain't big enough. So maybe there just wasn't any good blue cards in the last pack for us, but there is a couple of good ones here. I might just want to take the Crime Land, though. Is that wrong to take over either Bloodseeker or Jailbreak Scheme? I mean, we're we're almost assuredly playing Black, and the Bloodseeker does commit a crime. So I'll go ahead and take this here, and green is already pretty well cut. So glad we didn't find our way into green. There is a Crown, which I think is good, but... 
I don't think it's worth moving into here. There's Slick Shot Vault Buster, Black Snag Buzzard. Holy Cow, I think, is the best card here, but pretty far away from casting that. I don't think Oasis Gardener's worth it. Maybe if we go hard enough in blue-black committing crimes, this is fine, but I don't really like much of any of this. I don't think I'm playing really any of it here. All right, there's a Wolverine... Another Vault Buster. There is actually, I said green was cut, but there is a couple of green cards here. As well as a Sterling Hound. Not thrilled with our options. I guess I could just take Sterling Hound just to... It's probably going to go in whatever deck we play. I don't think I'm going to miss the Wolverine as much, even if I go Black Red. Black Red usually wants to be very... Very outlaw forward, and Wolverine is unfortunately not an outlaw. I think I'll take the Conduit Pylons here as another desert to help our deserts do, as well as other desert-related cards. Spring Splasher, not really a card you want in blue-black most of the time. Caught in the Crossfire, Quick Draw, all cards just not really thrilled about. I'll just take another Sterling Hound there. And the Tyrant's Scorn Wield. Okay, so blue-black is open. So we will take this here and pick up. And we did get the Armadillo and the Thunder Thief, which means... What was I looking for in this pack that didn't come back? Can't remember exactly, but... Take the Thunder Thief here. Desecrator as well. And neutralize the guards. So blue-black is looking to be open. Can we profit here in pack two? And a quick glance says no. There is Path to Exile, which I think is a fine removal spell, just not outstanding, because they do get a basic, which is worse than you would think for you. There is Combal Profiteering Mayor, though, and I mean, what else do I take? Like, Raven, I don't think is very good. Vault Buster, Splasher, Muscle, I don't like any of that. Maybe there's a chance we go black-white here and give up on, you know, just a couple of cards and play a lower-to-the-ground kind of black-white deck. We could potentially even splash this if we're making a good amount of tokens. I just, I don't like any of these blue or black cards. So let's just take that, see where to go from there. Alright, Satoru is a weird card. It's a 2 mana, 2, 3 menace, but like, it, it cares about plot cards, which doesn't really fit with the archetype. So much so that I think Soured Springs is actually just better for us. I've played with this card at least twice, and both of the times it's just a 2 mana, 2, 3 menace, which like I said, is fine, but, you know, Crime Land's that touch both of our colors are also fine. So I think I'm just going to take this, and maybe we even wheel the Satoru. I mean, blue-black was open last pack, so let's go ahead and take that here. All right, a couple of good things here. I think I'll take the Shoot the Sheriff. There is an Unscrupulous Contractor as well, which I think is pretty good. Um, but removal is also fine. This is this is a decent removal spell. It hits a, a good amount of the bombs in the format, actually. I think making all the bombs have outlaw synergies as well would, would have been maybe a little bit too much. <laughs> but things like, you know, Terror of the Peaks and the big dragons and stuff, this can kill. So I think I'll just take this here. I think we know we're black. We're trying to figure out what to pair it with. And now here's a... Here's a tough one. We got Rictus Robber versus Consuming Ashes. Both of these are very good, and Void Rend to a lesser extent. Maybe this wheels, but this is a really tough one. I think both of these are very good cards here. Um, but I think I'm going to take Consuming Ashes. It goes really well with our Committing Crimes plan so far. I would love a Rictus Robber, don't get me wrong. But I think I'm going to take my first Consuming Ashes, which I think is still the best common in the set. Or second best behind Throw from the Saddle at this time. So what do we got now? Seize the Secrets for card advantage, because we will be committing a lot of crimes. Binding Negotiation to get a card out of their hand. 
This town ain't big enough, which I don't know how much we're going to be bouncing our own things, but we could. I mean, you know, bouncing things like Desperate Bloodseeker's not bad. Sterling Hound's not bad. I think I'm between Seize the Secrets and Binding Negotiation here. I think I'll take the Negotiation. Seize the Secrets is a kind of card that I feel like I could get a copy of if I really wanted one. So I'm not going to take that right now. And I would like to end up with a copy of it, but I think we could find one in pack three if we want. I think I'll take the Jailbreak Scheme here. And I think I'm pretty much locking in blue-black at this point. Took the early con ball, but like really over nothing. So we got Newt, which doesn't... I've tried this out. It just doesn't really do what you want it to do. An Assassin. We'll go ahead and take the Jailbreak Scheme here. Alright, currently only five creatures. I don't think this is a Forsaken Miner deck. I mean, it could be. We've got Tiny Bones. Bloodseeker. No. We're going to be much more of a control deck here. I'll take the Skullduggery over the, uh, the cheaper creature there. Now we got a Defender creature. I think I'll take a Slickshot Vault Buster. Rooftop Assassin. That doesn't really work with anything we're trying to do, and it's a little bit more expensive. This card actually could be a win con for us. I mean, it's got Vigilance. It blocks well. How about it wheeling? Tomb Trawler. I just, I don't see a use for this. I mean, I guess it's defensive, but like, so is this. But this can also be a win con that can actually attack. How about four of them? <laughs> I don't think I need four, but I'm not playing a Spring Splasher. Corrupted Conviction. I don't think works in our deck, so I guess I'll take Rope Master, but probably not a card I'm looking to play. Nothing here. Probably not making the cut, and nothing there. What can we find in pack three? Which one is this again? So five mana reanimation with two additional counters. And then it pings them, maybe, possibly, but not very often. Also pest control, not really for limited. There's a rooftop assassin and a gen of fool's fall, and that's it as well as gold pan. Um, swing and a miss here. There's a Congregation Griff, but that's not for us. There's a Hellspur Brute. I don't think that's for us. So... I'll just take this and probably not play it because I'm wheeling basically everything else out of that pack. Uh, lots of good stuff still. Buried in the Garden, Armadillo. Good cards here, but I think I gotta take the Jailbreak Scheme and not liking where I'm at, unfortunately. We didn't really find the good stuff. I think I'll take the Unfortunate Accident here. Four mana, destroy a creature. Commits a crime, makes a mercenary for five. Contractor did not wheel in the last pack. Jailbreak scheme here as well. But I'll take the accident and just be a black control deck, I guess. Arroyo could help splash a white card, which we I don't think we want to do. So I think I'll just take the Heartless Village here. Three mana, they discard a card, and maybe sometimes we make a treasure. I don't really believe in the Raven of Fell Omens thing. All right, now we got a Roded Canyon. I really don't think we need to splash this. But here is the... Oh, wow. I just noticed that. That's really late. We're just... We're, we're blue-black, though. I don't think we can... We can't switch to red-black. So, I think here I'll take a Seize the Secrets over a second Bloodseeker and a Roded Canyon, because I don't really need the red mana. And I would like a little bit of card draw to help me. Well, actually... Never mind. Intimidation campaign is my card draw. This is this is the engine that I need for this deck here. So we're gonna we're gonna rely on intimidation campaign. Take the failed fording here as more bounce. I don't think it's a fake your own death kind of deck. I've played this kind of deck so far in the format and not been super thrilled. Whoa, let's go. We did it. P 
pick seven intimidation campaign number two. All right, we're perfect then. <laughs> we're good to go. All right, how much deserts do we have? Three. Do we want a Mirage Mesa or a Stop Cold? I think we're okay on interaction. Could have been black white here very easily with the Forsaken Miner and the Nizumi Link Breakers and stuff. I'm actually going to take the Stop Cold. I think that's. We have a lot of bounce interaction, but the Stop Cold is a way to deal with something that sticks on the battlefield, which I think could be important for us. Guess I'll take the Assassin, but I hope to not play it. Some good cards here. Jailbreak Scheme did wheel. Oh, I'll play three, probably. I don't think that's worth splashing necessarily. All right, so we are just blue black control here <laughs> with slick shot vault busters as our win cons. All right, I'll build this control deck and I will see y'all after deck building. Okay, this should be an interesting one. Our basically only win con outside of intimidation campaign is five slick shot vault busters here now. This is going to be kind of a meme deck to an extent, although there is a chance this could actually work. This is a decent blocker, so I think that we're probably going to play this on turn three most games. It's going to block their two drops and even some of their three drops. If they use cards to get rid of it, it's probably not the end of the world. We've got like, like eight removal spells and like five bounce spells <laughs> to go along with this. To attack is a 3-4 Vigilance. This, these commit crimes. The, the campaigns are going to be our win cons most of the time. But this Vault Buster, I think while playing an important role as a defender, we only have seven, no, eight creatures in this entire deck. Who needs win cons? This will be an interesting one. I think I'm going to keep the three deserts to help out our deserts do here. Don't really need the Jagged Barons for color. But I do think... It committing a crime for zero mana will be nice for us. And uh, yeah, this kind of goes here. This kind of goes here. And yeah, that's what it's looking like. This will certainly be very interesting. <laughs> but I'm going to give it a shot. So I'll see you in game number one. All right, we did it. We've got Vault Buster on three. Our entire game plan is, is working out. And Tiny Bones on one, for what that's worth. Um, not that that's really going to do anything. But we'll give it a shot. Alright, let's surveil here. Another Jailbreak Scheme, yeah, sure. Eat it. <laughs> Tiny Bones to the rescue. Vault Plunder, look. 3-1 versus a 1-4. Who wins that matchup? No attacks here. And now we've got... Jailbreak schemes for a potential 4-drop play. Make this attack as a 3-4 Vigilance. Can still hold back to block it. What more could you want? Alright, well obviously can't really block that into open mana here. They got Skullduggery or something. Whoa, what is this? It's all upside is what that is. Okay, so I can use Stop Cold to just keep it on the battlefield. Or I can use Jailbreak Scheme to, like, bounce it several times. They're probably going to want to keep replaying it, I would think. Um, let's go ahead and use Stop Cold here. I think that's one of the better targets to make sure just stays off the battlefield. Or, like, stays irrelevant. Although, they could have things like Throw from the Saddle to kill our Vault Buster. Still using the Rattle Worm, which would be kind of annoying... But a 6-5 Trample 
is still pretty good. Kervek. All right. Let's see if it's snakeskin veil that they do in fact have here. No? Okay. And look at this Vault Buster just getting in. Next turn we can cast this for both spree modes. What do they have? Skullduggery? It was Skullduggery. Okay, so they were just trying to make us play into that. Um... Alright, I mean, maybe they have a kill spell, but... Kept it on top, go to 5. We have removal plus a 1-1 one, one coming. That doesn't block this well. Let's see if they play Kerbeck as well. Ah, uh, they did find the throw from the saddle, unfortunately. That is the downside of Stop Cold here. Now, it's all up to Intimidation Campaign and one of our other... Four <laughs> slick shot vault busters. And ankle biter. All right. Caravac can accrue them good value here, so I don't want them to get that. See if they want to trade. Pass it back, because we drew a land. And now it's a top deck war. We just got to find one of our intimidation campaigns here. Rise of the Varmints. Let's see. That's my expectation at this point. One, two, three, four, four. No mourner surprise getting Kervik back. All right. Okay, top deck war. Okay, not not horrible, I don't think. Yeah, you probably don't want to block. <laughs> That's what I thought. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, they probably want to target me because of Kervik here. Now, please don't mill Intimidation Campaigns. I would very much like... ...to be able to draw those. Oh, they're chaining Kervik into itself here. Mourner Surprise. They are losing life by doing this, but they do have a couple of life linkers, so. <laughs> All right. Sure.
Uh, I mean, I guess. I mean, those are our win cons, basically. Can't really afford to use Kervec very much anymore. I mean, they can attack and then use Kervec after they commit the crime here just to gain life. So they'll commit the crime on us again. I guess they could... Can they loop this here? Kind of. Oh, this is going to be interesting. They could just keep looping desperate blood seekers. Huh. Oh, they're just going to mill us out? Ugh. Really? <laughs> really? Alright. I don't think we have a way to win anymore. So this gets bigger, that gets smaller. Still do have 12 cards, but basically all of our best cards are gone. We have one more Vault Buster. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we have six lands in our last twelve cards here. There's one of them. And now I guess we're dead on board. Okay, not anymore. But we do have to just bounce, bounce, and then we're dead next turn to the Raven. If they draw a crime... Okay, they didn't draw a crime. So they attack all... I should have held full control, because then they wouldn't probably have attacked all, because we could have bluffed a card here. So we have to do this, and if we draw nothing, then we lose. And there it goes. All right. <laughs> Losing to the mill of Desperate Bloodseeker milling all our best cards. Feels great. All right, here we are first with Binding Negotiation on two and Vault Buster on three. I think I'll go ahead and keep that here. And then another Swamp lets us play Ashes on four if they have a good target for it. So I think our plan, I mean, it would have worked out last game like pretty well for us had we managed to draw one of the cards that got milled. So I consider last game a decent success in the, uh, in the form of this deck. Alright, Island is not what we need. Let's see what we get out of their hand here. No black mana at all. Wow, they don't have... anything. I guess they could cast this eventually, but we can Consuming Ashes that. The Imp's Mischief, like would turn the target of one of our spells around. I don't care about the miner. The Vault Buster can block that for days. And the Raven... 
Well, I guess I'll take this. I'd rather my, my removal spells resolve here. Let's hope they miss black for a long time. Okay, so they drew a card that can target a creature for a green and a blue here. That's interesting, but okay. Yeah, that's fine. All right, go to combat. Attack for one. What do they draw? Failed fording, maybe? No, maybe just a combat trick of sorts? Okay, there's the black. Let's see what they choose to do with it. They plotted a lone shark. Okay. I don't think I need the treasure here, and I'd rather attack for more. So I'm just going to do this pre-combat attack for six as opposed to two. Because, I, again, I don't feel like I need the treasure in this spot. So they got rid of their two cheap black cards. Still keeping Hell Spur Brute, which is going to be consumed to ashes here more than likely. Black off the top would be great. That would let us cast both. That's an outlaw as well. All right. Let's just... Uh, is there a way we could blow them out with Skullduggery? Probably not. And if they double blocked, I don't really want them to be able to double block necessarily. We can do that next turn. So we'll attack for three here. Play some, some big non-outlaw creature. That is an outlaw. It's not necessarily big, though. Hmm, how do we do this? I think I'd rather kill the lone shark, so... Oh, wait. We can. We can just... Oh, wow, this is so busted. So this is going to be a 4-5, and this is going to be an 0-2. Wow. <laughs> Skull Skullduggery for one mana. We were able to kill both of their creatures. A 2 for 1 for one mana. There we go. What are they looking in their yard for here? Buzzard is a 2-1... I'm going to save that for my turn. Shoot the sheriff here. They obviously have some sort of interaction. Do I care about using the additional two mana? No, the additional three mana? Or would I rather hold up shoot the sheriff here? I think I'm just going to try to do this. So let's do this and that. They'll probably bounce or kill this Vault Buster if I had to guess. <laughs> Alright, thinking about which one to interact with here. It's got to be the 4 5, right? Oh, that's fine. Still attacks as a 3-2. Sure. That can't block. That... Dodges shoot the sheriff, but we still... 
Uh, we can't commit a crime, unfortunately. Okay, let's put them to two, I guess. What is that? Another slick sequence here. Draws an extra card, I guess. Hmm. Shoot the sheriff looking real bad here. That's not bad. Kill the lone shark and win, I suppose. All right. Let's do that. <laughs> All right, Vault Busters to the rescue. <laughs> They've done some work here. I mean, first game they they did a good job and second game they just won. Okay, this hand needs a little bit of help here, but we are on the draw. We'll get an extra card. Conduit pylons can surveil into black as well, so... Well, we'll hope, hope it can. <laughs> yeah, as good as that card is, we unfortunately just need to get closer to a swamp, so we'll send that one away. And draw the swamp. Alright, what are we dealing with here? No white mana. Conviction, surprise, and... Thunder Lasso is a bit of an aggro card. All right, I'm definitely going to take the Rakish Crew. As that seemed to be the only real action they had going on. All right, guess whose time it is. It's time for a Slick Shot Vault Buster. All right, got the white mana. Stagecoach Security, okay. All right, let's do this. Commit the crime for free and hit for three. Unfortunately, Corrupted Conviction makes Stop Cold a whole lot worse. I'm probably gonna have to trade the Corrupted Conviction for a Jailbreak Scheme, which is okay. So this deals Four, right? Okay, let's do... Artifact or Creature Zone. I did target that, though. Why did it make me do it again? Target Artifact or Creature Zone or put... Okay, so target a creature. Submit one. And let's see if they do decide to Corrupted Conviction here. All right, got it out of their hand, which is good, because now the stop cold can actually potentially do something. And I do think, even though this does commit a crime, I have two other ways to commit crimes in my hand, so I'm just going to go ahead and play it now. This deals minus four, minus four. This kills something. And then I guess they'll still play... No? Okay. I don't think they're going to want to keep this here. So we attack for 6, 7, 8 right now, and then Deserts do the combo when that comes in. Sure. Sure. 
I could just stop cold on my turn and guarantee I get six more damage through, which I think might just be better. They do still get the ability of creating more tokens, but... I won't be able to commit a crime on my turn if I don't, if I use the Desert's do here, so let's just use Stop Cold. Attack for six. And then have a Desert's do for another play, potentially. That's another play, but it's not enough. <laughs> All right. Slick Shot Vault Buster Aggro <laughs> slash Blue Black Control. Same deck. Well, looky who it is. Our friend, the Vault Buster. <laughs> we'll keep, and we have Tyrant Scorn in hand to kill a two drop. There's a two drop. This also kills a two drop, though. This could kill a three. Um. Let's do this. I think the Tyrant Scorn is more more versatile here and can potentially kill a 3-drop at some point. Like that one. I would like to get my creature down first, though, as this has been very important <laughs> to our game plan. Let's see if they do have Throw from the Saddle. Look at all the crimes I can commit. Clearly not blocking. This is a time where I do think I need the treasure more than I need the three points of damage. So let's get the treasure here. Which technically does still hold up Skullduggery. I right, got rid of two lands. See if they attack into Skullduggery. Okay, they do. So this is going to be a 4-5, and we can make that a 3-4. Which would I rather kill here? I think I would rather kill this, because again, the Tyrant Scorn can eat the Possum. Or can kill the Possum here. So, let's do this, and... I guess we give that minus one, minus one, because this is, again, it's going to be a three, four, plus one, plus one, equals four, five, eats their Daring Thunder Thief here. So we'll do this. I don't necessarily like missing land drops, obviously, so... Because they could have, um... Snakeskin Veil... Just gonna go ahead and do that main phase here. Doc or lock. A little late for him to be at his best. He's also not. No, they got the throw from the saddle. No, annoying when I've got all this removal in hand. Alright. I guess I'll commit two crimes in a row. Ooh, good thing we got that off. Swing and a miss. No. Let's get rid of that in attack, I think. Because I can use the Jailbreak Scheme if I draw one more land to make this a 3-3. Which I think would be pretty good. 
Yeah, so, I mean, I guess we'll just do this, counter here, bounce that, and then now we're racing with a 3-3. Three, three. They probably don't want to draw a Raucous Entertainer in this spot, so that's just going to go away. Okay, now it's who can top deck the fewest amount of lands. <laughs> the answer is neither of us, but we do have a 3-3 lifelink going, so at least there's that. Yeah, what'd they find? They found a loan shark. That does work. But we'll take our fourth land in a row here. And at least we're both top decking lands. Yeah, sure, it's not a land, I guess. <laughs> Plus, it is going to threaten to trade with something here. Okay, make it 3-3. Three, three. So I guess Tiny Bones is just going to trade with the 3-3, three, three, I suppose. Alright, I guess I'll trade. Now that they offered this one here. Then Tiny Bones now trades with a Lone Shark, unless they draw something else. Alright, so let's trade it off. And then we'll play a Vault Buster. Come on, get on out. All right, more Vault Busters. We both top decked relatively horribly so far. <laughs> Unfortunately, cannot win unless they flash something in. Okay, sure. And the turn. That's fine. And this should be a win here. Yeah. Three past it. I did that on my turn on the upkeep so I can guarantee or surveil a potential a land away so I could draw an actual card that turn. So that's why I did it the way I did. And here we go. Vault Busters for the win. All right, on the draw with a very slow hand, but we do have a card that has been very shy so far in Intimidation Campaign. I think I'm probably leading on Vault Buster here. Island is not something I need. Alright, playing against green-white, unfortunately, here. So we'll probably take the loss on this one, I would think. It's not a great matchup, as this is the best deck in the format, with two trained Airinxes on the battlefield by turn three. So good for them. I'll do this. It technically blocks it well, but usually this deck deals deals with opposing threats quite well. All they need is a throw from the saddle here, and things will be fine for them. That is really annoying against Intimidation Campaign. Do I have to Jailbreak Scheme the Rat and then negotiation it from their hand or something? They're just going to replay it, though. Protect that from the rat, and then... I 
guess, attack and trade it with the bandit and the rat if they want to? These schemes are a little slow for this matchup. Also fine trading this for like an air Inx and a rat, I guess. Or just having them take three. Now that they know we have this, this is more than likely just trading for this at some point. I keep saying rat. It's technically not a rat. <laughs> Interesting plan there, but okay. Trying to push some damage, I suppose. Okay, they are tapped out now, so I guess I could Intimidation Campaign and Binding Negotiation, but I'm not guaranteed to hit anything. But I can return that back to my hand. The next turn I can play it again and Jailbreak Scheme this thing, maybe? Okay, we did actually get something. So now we have to take at least five, potentially more. We've gotten a decent little value out of this, even though this is likely just trading for it at some point. So might just have to accept that that will happen. Not a bad draw. They could hit me for eight here, go to five. I might have done that backwards. Not sure. So we unfortunately can't consuming ashes and Desperate Bloodseeker due to mana considerations, so... We can Intimidation Campaign and Jailbreak Scheme, though. Which I just don't know if it's that's good enough. Let's do this and surveil, see if we can find something good here. Ugh. I don't think that's good enough, even though it does commit a crime. We don't care that much. So let's do this. See if they want to use the varmint to kill it or not. They might not. They might just want to keep a creature on the battlefield. I will have to take at least four here, because I can't block that. I could block this four, five, six, seven, go to two. I probably should have attacked and, and threatened to... Uh, trade this here so now what am i doing probably consuming ashes this and jailbreak scheme something else the, the drover grizzly probably <clears throat>
Okay, so let's do this and do it to this one. Okay, they're putting that on top. All right, we're fighting our way back as much as we can here. My plan is to consuming Ashes the Paladin on their turn and potentially eat the Voracious Varmint if they do choose to attack all. Okay. Go to one. Four, five, six, seven, eight. So I could do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight here. And I have the mana to do it all. The Bloodseeker blocks the Grizzly pretty well. So do Double Vault Busters here. They did top a card, so I don't know what their plan is with that. Oh, I'm going to mill them too here, so... See what they decided to keep on top. It was another paladin. And let's see if they want to trade. I think I'd be fine doing that. Play another one. And cross your fingers here. Have we stabilized? Okay, that's a 3-3. Three, three. And it draws a card. Alright, so they didn't get priority here, so I feel okay about doing this and not have having them have some sort of big trample trick. Okay, no priority. One, two, three, four, five, six. So let's do this here. Commit the crime. Trade this for a three, three. They might not want to though, considering we do have interaction in hand and black mana. So we could have things like deserts do and all sorts of stuff to kind of blow them out here. Okay, go to damage in the turn, and now we do have stop cold up here as well. Ah, okay, that's that's not the end of the world. We can we can fight through that to stop cold here now. Do I want to do that on my turn to commit the crime though? No, it's four mana. I can still commit a crime on my turn if I want to. So, let's just do this. Do this. Do this. And that's probably good enough. I mean, it's not technically lethal. They block here. They take six. They go to one. Probably didn't want to put that on top, but I'll take it. And there we go. Man, pretty proud of how I played that game. I mean, we were down to one and two for most of it. Constantly fighting back, using Intimidation Campaign, being very mana efficient. 
really proud of my play in that game. This is why magic is great, when you can have moments like that and feel good about what you did. Okay, pretty slow here. Um, we are on the draw. A few three drops. I think I'm going to keep it. This could go wrong, obviously. But I think if I was on the play, I would not have kept this hand. Just because we get one fewer shot at a land for turn three. But we did find one here. Alright, so this attacks. Look at the top card of its land put on the battlefield. That's going to be pretty darn good here now that they've got some stuff going on. Hopefully they don't hit a land. They didn't, so we know they're not drawing a land. Wow, we've got lots of stuff going on. Uh, Alright, creature, protect our life total. I just want to hit lands at this point. Crime land wouldn't be horrible. That would mean I can play campaign, draw a card, play the crime land, and be off to the races, hopefully. Can't block this thing, though. Alright, what do they have? Am I going to trade this for a card now? Yeah, looks like I will. Alright, I got two more. It's alright. Do I have to out-cold this thing right now just to prevent myself from, like, Dying? <laughs> or stop cold? Out cold was from Wilds of Eldrain, I think. Um, I think I can afford at least one more turn. So let's just play another one. Not liking my chances here. The mana situation is just looking really ugly for us. Like, we can't really double spell at all. Alright, doing it again here. Guess we'll trade it for another combat trick. I mean, we just need to kind of stall until we can get our mana underneath us. Not too bad, actually. That's, that's a decent little draw. That does trade with many different things. We are running out of win cons, unfortunately. would like the treasure from this. Let's see if they get priority. They don't. I don't think they're going to block now. So I could get the treasure. And I, I do think I would like to get their last two cards while this is still relevant here. Whoa. Okay. I'm glad I did that. <laughs> Okay, off we go with Intimidation Campaigns. And let's do another one of these, get more creatures on the battlefield. Next turn we can play Campaign, and if we draw a land in our draw step or off of the Campaign, we can Jailbreak Scheme something here. Got Bonnie Paul. Let's hope they don't have Recursion in their blue-green deck. I don't think there's Recursion in... Not that I can really think of. There might be something in green that can get that back, but we'll see. Alright, I do think I'd still just rather do this and campaign here. All right, and then scheme, potentially. I want to try to hit my land drops. Nope. 
I think that's our last vault buster. One, two, three, yeah, five. <laughs> Ooh, there we go. That's pretty good. Alright, let's get another creature down. I just want to make sure I get my creatures out. Make sure I protect my life total. And then I can start committing crimes left and right, drawing cards, milling. All right, what did you do here? Outlaw Stitcher. That could be pretty good. Jailbreak Scheme is going to deal with that, that creature token quite well, though. Honestly, lands aren't the worst thing in the world with Intimidation Campaigns here. I mean, this could just be the win con <laughs> at this point. They don't have, even have to be the Vault Busters. Yeah, I don't care about that. Play something else and then play the Stitcher. Okay, yeah, they do have something here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mana. So three plus. Yeah, that should be okay. Could probably keep it. Make a six, six. Can't be blocked. So I know I'm doing this. And then we'll get our creature back. So this can start sacking lands to draw cards and to make treasures, okay. Okay, I'm going to have to reset this Razzle Dazzler. I could just Consuming Ashes it at some point here. And or Tyrant Scorn now. Oh, I mistapped there. Ooh, that was awkward. <laughs> Glad I just drew the Swamp. That was, that was definitely a mistap. Hmm. Do I want to trade one of these for an ankle biter? I don't think I have enough cards left in my deck to win solely off of intimidation campaigns here, so I'm going to have to push some damage in some way. So let's trade it, probably at least one for an ankle biter here, and then another one for a commando. Okay. We do still have a jailbreak scheme to get one of them through. Or the last one through, I guess. Kind of cleaning out a little bit of their board. No, they got clear shot. Jailbreak scheme as well. Attack for... Okay. Do I want to draw it? Four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I think I have to. I mean, it's like one of my last creatures. <laughs> Attack for four. Don't like missing the land drop. <laughs> I still just need to draw lands. Okay, that could become a 4-1 here. 
So hit us for five. That should be okay. Let's do this. There we go. All right. What can we do here now? Still just a lot of things. <laughs> That's not an outlaw, so let's just destroy that. One, two, three. I think I'm just going to fail fording their sentinel so I can attack for three as well. Put them down to four. I guess now I could also deserts do that. Which would I rather? Does it matter? I might want to kill something else more. So let's just bounce that. If I bring both of these back to hand, I have to discard to hand size here, which seems okay. The binding negotiation really isn't doing much at all. So take action, take action. Land is fine. Attack. Get rid of negotiation here. Now we're two turns away from these being the win cons by themselves with 11 cards left in deck, so that should be fine. So let's go ahead and just continue to Intimidation Campaign our way to victory here, I think. Five mana. This should do it. Counter here. Creature there. Alright, then I guess we can't do both. Counter here. There we go. Wow. Alright, well that worked. <laughs> Lots of game actions, but it worked out in our favor for sure. Alright, not a bad start here. Don't have any of our creatures or intimidation campaigns, but we do have removal and hand disruption here. So if they play some sort of 2-drop that we need to kill with Deserts do, we can do that. And now we've got the 3-drop. <laughs> Slickshot Vault Buster, what a card. Uh, okay. I don't like Deserts doing that, but I, we just need to preserve our life total. That's been the most important thing in each of these matchups. See if you want to protect it, or if you just let this die here. Okay. Committing crimes can return it, but... Alright, this is going to be pretty bad blowout. If they can commit a crime and return the miner, that's going to be pretty annoying here. That's... That is a way to do that for zero mana. <laughs> Oh, they whiffed. Okay, that's good. Okay, let's commit a crime attack for three and heartless pillage here. Make a treasure. Next turn, we can campaign and jailbreak scheme something if we feel like we need to. Okay, got rid of a land and a rictus robber. Let's see. It must mean they have a five or a six drop in hand. I 
Because that was a free way to commit a crime for the lookout. So let's see if this just kills this here. Yeah, okay. That is what it was. Play a 3-2. Alright, alright. We are somehow down to 7 life. I don't know how that happened. Alright, I think we're gonna be out of luck here. Alright, can we fight back like we did last game? Because unfortunately, Shoot the Sheriff can't kill anything they have. Ugh, go to one. Tiny Bones isn't gonna do it. Consuming Ashes can't be cast. Cast this, go to three, and then die. Tiny Bones block that, and then die. Darn, they got out to too good of a head start with, you know, the Forsaken Miner bringing it back, the Lookout killing our creature, so they just kind of had a really good curve of creatures there. All right, nice little curve here. Got a four drop removal spell, three drop, and two drop removal spell, as well as a two drop, and now a three drop. So I will take all of these things. So let's go ahead and just play the Bloodseeker, I think. Playing against green-white. What's new? Green-white, blue, Miriam, that's a problem. Don't think they'll trade here. But I would like to get the Vault Buster down as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. I'll take that. Can't cast either of these, unfortunately. Because I need two black for both of them. Alright, that's a 5-5. Five, five. Now I can. Uh, Alright. Take one. Go ahead. Sure. Wanted Griffin. That is more my speed, because that I can exile that. So let's do that. And then I can also Tyrant Scorn this thing. Attack for three. And we are kind of running out of gas a little bit. Okay, yeah, that's a stupid card. <laughs> Looks like we're going to have to unfortunate accident that. And now the scheme can be cast for six here. Let's see what they plot. Betrayal at the Vault. Alright, well... I guess I could take that card. Or I could get rid of Lassoed by the Law. And Jail... Huh. How much do I care about them lassoing my Vault Buster as opposed to taking the Betrayal? The Betrayal doesn't do a lot right now. I mean, it could at some point, but... The Lasso gets rid of my only threat here? I think I'm going to take this. Now, they could draw a big creature here and then immediately kill both of my creatures, which obviously wouldn't be good. But if they don't do that, I do like my chances. Okay, now they can kill both of my creatures again. Alright. 
Okay. It wasn't exactly a big creature, but it did do the job. If I shuffle that away, are they gonna... Are they gonna put it back on top here is the question. I get to draw a card as well? Dang it. Alright, I think we have to... have to keep that just to stem the bleeding here I think they would they should keep it on top that makes most sense yeah there it goes they get to draw it now and then draw another one what else did they draw nothing all right all right I will wait for a creature at this point they do have an instant if I can draw a creature yeah, yeah, sure. Alright, now it's just a top deck war, and I think we're losing. Give me another Vault Buster here, or another Blood Seeker, or something. Kept it on top, it's not good news for us. That is also horrible news. Go to nine. Mill the card they kept on top, but then Still have to take at least three. Kept the vigilante up there. Oh, that'll do it. Take six. Another top. And a land. All right. So. We had a couple sweet games that draft, and boy did I think not think that Slick Shot Lock or Slick Shot Vault Buster <laughs> was gonna be the MVP, but here we are. You know, having some fun here. Five and three, I'll take it. I would have really loved for this deck to get the trophy. I think it was pretty fun. Uh just ran into a couple of buzz saws and basically the games that we lost, we just ran out of we ran out of gas. We didn't find either campaign in I think all three games that we lost. And they dealt with our creatures in the ones that we did and then just kind of drew two or three lands in a row and that, that's enough to lose if they've got a creature on the battlefield. So I will take it as a five and three. It was a great fun deck today. Hope you guys enjoyed watching it. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time for your daily draft.